everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and we're going to be doing something different today. So two days ago I put out a poll just wondering what kind of subreddits you guys wanted to see on the channel um, and over 58% of you said that you wanted to see a video on Pro Revenge. So I have seen some other channels cover Pro Revenge but we're going to be doing it ourselves today. So without further ado, here we go. Grip attempted to cut me out after I did about 60% of the work. They failed. This happened about 12 years ago while I was studying aeronautical engineering. Due to some money grubbing legislation tactics, most who have gone to college know about the unnecessary courses that are tacked onto the degrees in order to graduate. One of those courses for my degree was a business class. Seriously, you'd think these guys would understand that most engineers don't do the business side of things. Thankfully, we had a teacher who was understanding of the fact that many of us in the class were bored out of our minds. I'll admit to having always been a geek, nerd who loved making good grades. If I didn't understand something, I run at it hard and try to change that. This class stumped me for quite some time and then a nightmare of a project was announced. One worth 50% of our grades. The school was a small one, the class a little more than 30 people and I was assigned to work with three people I knew from other classes. We had problems straight away. Two of the people remembered me from a calculus class that they barely passed as the person who sailed easily through and decided to dump their portion of the work onto me straight away, knowing I wouldn't allow myself to fail. They were right. At first, my other group member tried to pick up the slack as well, pulling hard to do a difficult project in a subject we barely understood. I'll admit, she was a trooper. Unfortunately, she was also someone easily manipulated and our two slacking group members began applying pressure during the semester for her to take the work and allow them to present it. The day of the project finally comes and I'm sick as a dog, pretty much quarantined in the clinic due to bronchitis. I managed to send a message to the teacher. The two slackers managed to wrangle the presentation from the girl who worked with me and presented it to the class, declaring that they had done all the work and I was skipping class because they had told me that they were going to tell the teacher what happened. My initial grade was an F. I was beyond pissed until I realised something important. Part of the project involved a written report of which I held the only copy since I was the one to type it up. Cue the revenge. Privately I went to the teacher with my notes and the report in order to get the grade I earned and to get him in on the plot. He agreed since it seemed fun and he planned to field him anyway for academic dishonesty. Publicly there was no report. The classmates that had attempted to take all the credit began to approach me, first demanding the report. Most of the time my response was, but I didn't do any of the work, in a sickly sweet voice. Next they attempted to act all buddy buddy, trying to convince me that it had all been a joke and promising me they'd tell the professor that I had done some work, giving me some credit so that I had the possibility to pass. This was met with stony silence on most occasions before I told them that I'd rather fail than let them pass. Things escalated after that to include the door of my dorm being wrapped on at odd hours of the night, shoving and them stealing my backpack and notebooks in order to try and find the report themselves. One of them even asked my roommate to let them search for a report I had written and forgot for our grip. Didn't have her as my roommate the following semester. Things finally came to a head on the last week of classes. I had held out on them for a month, not telling any of my group mates what I had done and enough time had elapsed that even if they were to turn in the report now, it would be so late that they'd still have failed. They hadn't even attempted to do the report themselves and the girl who had worked with me was in hysterics over the very real possibility of failing the class. It was what the teacher and I had been waiting for and he finally decided to return the reports. The two slackers glared daggers at me as the teacher returned the report of every other group in the class before stopping in front of them. He was holding what looked to be one extra report and they were immediately looking hopeful. He set a single sheet of paper on one of their desks before moving to the desk of the girl who had worked along with me and set the report on her desk. I had to dock some points for dishonesty, but you and your partner did decently, he said before moving on. My partner realised what I had done. We only got an 82 on our project, but it was far better than the zero that our ex group mates received. I had been carefully documenting the harassment that the two slackers had put me through and ensured several witnesses saw some of what they did. Two days after being informed that they were failing, the pair had a new problem. I gave the evidence to the administration of our school and the teacher reported their academic dishonesty. The administration did a bit more digging and found that the pair had been making trouble for some time and a number of students reported similar problems of having their work stolen. The slackers were expelled. So this was the first pro revenge story that I've ever actually read and wow. 
I mean, I encountered people like this whenever I was in university and it was so stressful to be in a group with people who didn't pull their weight, but it never got to the point where anyone was bullied or threatened or anything like that. But what an outcome. I would have absolutely loved to have seen the reactions on all of their faces and to see them get expelled. They got exactly what they deserve. You threaten me? Good luck with being fired and losing your work visa. Long. Ah, my mother. A wonderful woman she is. I love her to death and she loves me just as much back. But F with her two kids, you might find yourself losing your job. This comes with a little bit of backstory. Well, a lot of backstory, if I'm gonna be honest. And the ever so loved, sorry for the weird formatting I'm on my phone comment and TLDR at the bottom. When I was 18 months old, a year and a half old, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It's a hard disease to live with and I wouldn't wish it on anyone except for people who make those stupid I'm gonna get diabetes if I eat another cupcake comments. And similar stuff to that. Plus those stupid jokes too, I hate those with a passion because then they wouldn't joke about it or make those smart effing remarks. When I was 11, I started 6th grade with an insulin pump. It did wonders for my blood sugar and I. And I was also diagnosed with celiac disease during the summer, so it kinda got all screwy when I started the gluten-free diet and I went from a child's medium to a woman's extra large in shirts in a little over 4 months. I was growing tall and fast because of the diet and my pump was there able to keep my blood sugar levels from rising and falling way too often. All of my teachers knew of my diabetes so I got exemptions with special privileges because of it. This is important. In 7th grade, my school introduced this thing called alternates. If your teacher for that period would be absent, they would leave the work they wanted you to do out on a chair in the hallway, while you and three other students went to a completely different classroom to sit in and do the work needed. And it was never the same teacher you had to go to either. I remember my first class alternate was with the choir teacher, my third and fourth period alternate was with the 8th grade exam math teacher, and so on for all seven periods of the day. They didn't fix that problem until the next year, but were focusing on 7th grade. And yes, even my alternate teachers were told about my diabetes and they were lectured that if I wasn't allowed the special privileges that comes with being a certified dumbass diabetic, then they can and will be put on adult suspension, a punishment less harsh for the alternate teachers because they're not my regular teachers, which is just suspended from working for a few days with no pay, I think. My last period of the day was in social studies. The teacher was more likely absent than there because of a lot of familial issues that she was dealing with at the time. So I and two other students would take our assigned work and go to the French class. The French teacher, who I will call La Garce, the witch from now on, was an engaging teacher. She was loud and funny and got her class to genuinely enjoy the lessons and what was taught, but she was also strict with the rules. And she was an enforcer with the no phone rule. If she saw an outline of a phone in someone's pocket, she took it and held it until after class and gave it back then. So at the end of the day, after being all sweaty from gym class, climbing up two flights of stairs only to find my teacher was absent, grab the work and go to my locker. I was only one of a select few of students who got a locker at my middle school, but that's not important. To grab my social studies textbook and hurriedly walk down two flights of stairs yet again and through the hot March sun to the area where the French classroom was, I was on autopilot mode. My pump has a setting where it can vibrate if it alarms, but if you don't silence the alarm after a while or if the problem it was facing wasn't fixed, it would audibly beep. And I usually kept my pump sites in my thigh or stomach, so my pump would stay in my pocket at school, but I couldn't really feel the vibration if it was going off, so if I thought it was vibrating, I'd check it to make sure what the vibrating was for, even if I wasn't sure if it did vibrate. So on autopilot mode, I didn't feel my pump vibrating in my pocket until the middle of class. I don't remember the alert, but I think it was because the battery was low, I don't really remember. Completely forgetting to press the button that acknowledges the alert, I raise my hand to ask if I could go to the nurse. Lagarde says sure, just sign out first. It's to keep track of who enters and exits the rooms because of past lock time problems revolving around guns, and I can go. I get up, and in the middle of signing out, my pump audibly alerts me, and I nearly effing crap myself, because it genuinely scared me. I silence it, hoping to get out of the classroom without Lagarce noticing, but whoo, boy did she notice. Lagarce. What was that noise? Me, a dumb witch who had undiagnosed anxiety at the time and couldn't speak louder than volume level 2, also holding my pump in hand as I silenced the alarm. Oh, it was my pump, I'm sorry, it won't ha- Lagarce. If I had half a mind, I'd rip that thing right from your hands, throw it on the ground and stomp on it until it is dust. Me, shocked but not really bothered. Okay, Lagars. And so I leave the room, go to the nurse, fix my pump. She has spare batteries, extra pump supplies, extra insulin, 
a glucagon and snacks in case of emergencies and come back within 10 minutes. What Lagarce had said really sunken in and I realised, holy crap did this lady just threaten me? So I wrote a note asking if my friend, we had the same last period alternate, thank god, heard the same thing as I did, and she wrote back saying yeah she did, she even got it on recording too. Since our social studies teacher has a habit of not slowing down or stopping her lessons when she's there, my friend always sneakily turns her phone on right before she enters the room and records the entire lesson so she can go back and fill out the stuff she misses in her notes. I guess in our hurry to get to Lagarce's classroom she forgot to stop the recording so she was accidentally recording the French lesson. I didn't really know what to do with this information until 10 minutes later. I'm in my mom's car at dismissal and I tell her what happens. My mom slammed on the brakes, reversed back into the parking lot, parked her car and drug me inside the school. We get to the front office and everyone knew my mom and they could tell she was pissed the f off, even though she was keeping a pretty neutral face. I didn't even get to tell her that my friend had the interaction recorded until after my mom threatens to do something court related to the principal if she didn't do something to punish Lagarce. Then we had to wait an hour and a half until after the bus dropped my friend off at her house. She had to take the bus that day because her mom was working and her dad couldn't pick her up and she was also the last stop for her bus but I had to wait for my friend to get a ride back to school to show the principal the proof. I didn't even want to tell the principal about this, I just told my mom because I thought she would give me some advice with how to deal with the situation. My mom was the one who originally wanted revenge on Lagars for inherently threatening my life. We couldn't afford regular needles and we definitely couldn't have afforded the long acting insulin that I would have needed to take at night and in the morning if Lagarce had, in fact, stumped on my pump until it was dust, like she said she would have. My mum threatened to sue the school when she found the punishment that my principal would give Lagarce unfit. My principal asked what she could do to prevent that, and my mum told her to fire Lagarce. My principal said she would fire Lagarce the following Monday. She effin' lied. Lagarce searches for me during lunch, and legit tells me, I'm sorry that you couldn't understand that I was joking. She was not joking when she said she'd smash my pump to pieces, she was serious when she said it, angry even, to the point that when she said the threat she was red faced. She wasn't joking, so she's effing lying through her half assed apology, I don't even say anything. I'm too stunned because Lagarce is still there, not fired. I go to the bathroom immediately after the interaction and call my mum with my phone. She's livid, but I begged her not to come to school, to not sue and to not show her ass again, because I got it. She obviously reluctantly agrees and she doesn't come to school. The last week of March, the social studies teacher quits abruptly, causing her students to have to go to alternates for a week as the principal searched for a new teacher to hire. So I have to spend a week in Lagarce's classroom. No biggie. I planned on making her life a living hell while I'm stuck there anyway. If I unscrew the cap on my pump that keeps the insulin cartridge inside of it, it will alarm. Something I can do easily, and sneakily. I also took my pump off vibrate and put it on the loudest setting it would let me. So I caused my pump to alarm multiple times in her classroom. She would get so angry every time her teaching was interrupted, but she couldn't do jack because she was already on thin ice with me. Of course her students suffered, but that was a small price to pay for the ultimate revenge on this woman. I didn't even want to get her in trouble in the first place, but for her to come up to me unannounced and call me stupid? Yeah, no. Only I get to call myself a dumb witch. Her classroom is outside and when the bell rings for the end of the day, students pour out of the doors and have to pass by her classroom door in order to get to the buses. And so do the teachers who oversee the bus stuff. So on the third day of this, right as I walk out the door, Lagarce tries to grab me by the arm and forces me to turn to face her so she can chew my ass out. But what she really does is she ends up ripping my insulin side out of my arm, one that I had just put in during lunch because some dumb jerk accidentally ripped it out of my other arm during lunch. She doesn't realise she ripped the side out of my arm as she grabs me until I started to scream. First of all, she ripped a crap ton of tape that kept it inside of me and second of all, this was back when I was using the actual metal needle pump sites. So as she gripped my arm, she drug the needle through my skin before it fell out once it reached my elbow. I keep my sights when they're on my arms up closer to my shoulders where I have more fat so it doesn't hurt when I put it on. She drug the needle down from my shoulder to my elbow. It hurt. There was blood everywhere. Because although the needles are kind of small, they still have to go inside of my skin. The vice principal, a man whose only complaint I have of is that he almost gave me detention for forgetting to tuck in my shirt and wear a belt with our uniform on the last day of middle school, had just passed as this happened, so he saw the whole thing. I was screaming and crying, clutching my bloody arm. Lagarce was stood in shock as she just watched me as her hand was covered in my blood. My best friend was trying to stop the blood flow. 
All of the students had stopped and were now watching me and the vice principal instructed one of the teachers to bring Lagarde to the front office as he picked me up and carried me to the nurse's office and called 911. The nurse had wrapped my arm up as best she could before the paramedics arrived. I was rushed to the ER because I apparently needed stitches because it was a long and singular cut, I guess. It wasn't that deep, so I guess I got them to ensure that it would heal properly. I can't really remember, because my mum didn't arrive at the hospital until after I was given some good crap and then given stitches. Lagarce was immediately fired as soon as she reached the front office. I was approached by police, because apparently it looked like she did it on purpose, but I didn't want to press any charges on her, much to my mother's disagreement. That wasn't my plan on how to get her fired or to get her to quit. I wanted to annoy her, make it harder for her to teach, to the point where it gets so bad that the only piece she'd get was by quitting. I was unable to write for the last two months of school, unable to carry my own backpack, unable to be a part of my band's end of the year concert. We worked on some extremely fast paced piece that was really troubling me and I had practiced it so much that I memorized it, but all that practice went to F and waste I guess. I have trouble raising my arm and carrying heavy things, even after physical therapy. Which is a plus, because in one of my previous comments, I mentioned how one of my favourite parts of my day is after I shower, because my mum loves playing with my hair, so I let her blow dry it for me, which she also loves doing. It's also really hard for me to insert sights now, because the needles make me have panic attacks and I even vomited a few times, because all I could remember as I got that pain of inserting a sight was the feeling of it ripping down my arm. A few years later, in my sophomore year, after I went into DKA, Long story short, a sight needle somehow got kinked while in my leg and my pump was unable to deliver insulin properly so I almost died. I was given this cool new sight that only uses the needle to insert the tubing inside of my arm. Like an IV needle uses an actual needle to insert a plastic needle inside of your arm and then removes the real needle. So I haven't had needle related infusion sight problems in a while. Last week I ran into the principal and I was finally able to find out what happened to Lagarce. Since she was fired, she lost her visa and she was forced to go back to France. TLDR The French teacher at my middle school threatened to break my insulin pump because it went off in her class. Mum threatened to sue if she wasn't fired. Principal said she would fire her, but doesn't. Then, after basically calling me stupid, she accidentally cuts open my arm with my infusion site after she got fed up with my plan to annoy her till she quit, gets fired and loses her visa. I got my revenge, but not in the way I had originally planned. I think given the amount of pain, suffering, healing that this person had to go through, they definitely should have sued the teacher. The mum was probably right. <laughs> okay, so that's it for r slash pro revenge. I really hope you did enjoy it and as always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. I may do a few polls in the future just to see what you guys want to see and even introduce me to new subreddits as well. It's always interesting to mix it up a little bit. So thank you so much for watching. Bye!